Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> um, I'm not too prepared, so you'll have to bear with me. Um, my name is Christine Bardaros. I'm a professional cyclist, uh, pro mountain bike, road, cyclocross. And, um, and um, gosh, I've been vegetarian for about 16 years. And it's, you know, you hear about all these stories about why people become vegetarians. And most people are like, oh, well, I did it because I was told I have six months to live. And I was, you know, and, and other things. And people have all these different reasons. And seeing the video is a good reason to become vegetarian. And, but actually, I did it because uh, a girlfriend of mine, we were out to lunch. And she said, let's be vegetarians. We could feed the world four times over if everybody's vegetarian. I said, yeah, that sounds great. I was living in New York City. And it was, you know. I was like, what does that mean, though? You know, we're doing this. What does it mean? I had no idea until year after year doing all my research and kind of living, you know, living what I said I was going to do on a whim, what it was really like. And um, gosh, and I got into cycling actually about hmm, 11 years ago. And I was still a vegetarian and, uh, the whole time. Once I made that decision, it was, that was it. And then uh, about, let's see. And then about, uh, yeah, about 10, 10, 11 years ago, I started racing and riding bikes. And then two years later, I made the big change. I became vegan. That was about eight years ago. And that was really when I noticed all the big changes. I mean, I noticed some when I was, you know, becoming vegetarian. It was like, you know, I could recover quickly. And, you know, I had a lot of, you know, more energy. And I just felt better. I felt cleaner. I felt like my food was digesting better. But once I gave up the dairy and eggs, and I actually... I did that on a whim too. I well, it was kind of forced. I was lactose intolerant. I just woke up one day and couldn't do the Ben and Jerry's anymore, and life just changed. You know, it was like I was waking up. You know, like I'd I'd wake up, have my bowl of cereal like most people do with the big you know big bowl of milk, and and then at dinner I'd you know have all my cheese and crackers laid out while I was waiting for my pasta to cook, and then I'd follow it up with a whole pint of Ben and Jerry's because I was a bike racer and I could eat whatever I wanted. So. It was a nice life. I knew all the flavors and I had all the tops, you know, collected because they'd give you prizes. And, um, anyway, found out, went to the doctors, and they were like, well, you have to do sit-ups. And I was like, oh, great. It's like you're telling me I'm bloated because I have to do sit-ups. It turns out lactose intolerance. And, and I never really liked eggs anyway, so it was like, all right, I'm vegan. Had no idea what it meant. And then all of a sudden, you know, it was just like, that's just who I was. It wasn't like I was thinking, oh, well, I'm going to make a stand, or I'm a better person, or, you know, I, you know, I should do this, that, the other. It was, it was just how I was. And then being a professional athlete, I turned pro about six years ago. It was just, I'm looking around, and, you know, I'm not, I, you know, I had my own, my own really positive uh, feedback from my diet, which was no more allergies, you know, my face was cleared. I mean, I, I suffered from really bad cystic acne, which is terrible. It was like one of those, you know, the, you'd go like that, and it was just like, it was bad. <laughs> Almost as bad as the video, but not quite. But anyway, it's, um, that was better. I had so much more energy. I could breathe better. And I'm looking around and looking at all my, you know, my meat-eating coworkers. They're just like falling apart. They go out for one hard ride, and they're just like wiped at the end of the day. And I'm like, come on, guys, let's go. It was like all these great changes, and I was, I was recovering faster, never sick, almost never sick. It was just incredible, which means you have more days to train, which means that you're a more effective athlete. Now let me see what other uh, benefits I have. <laughs> um, yeah, no more, a big one was no more constant. Um, it, it's, it was weird, you know, especially as a woman, I noticed every time on a ride, I'd cough up phlegm and I'd, you know, go, hey, hey, hey the whole bit and I'd be stuffy and it was just, it was embarrassing. All that stopped the second I became vegan. It was just, you know, I could take a deep breath for the first time in my life. I used to have really bad asthma. <laughs> it just, just disappeared with, you know, with all the animal products. And, um, and I also have unfortunately experienced, um, break, you know, breaking my bones, you know, part of the, part of the job. And it was just like a miraculous recovery. My doctor was just freaking out how quickly I recovered. And this is a guy who, you know, he's, he's the doctor for Johnny Mosley and a bunch of other top pros. And uh, Marla Streb, if you guys have heard of her. And, uh, and it was just incredible. And the only thing I can, I can attribute it to is, is my diet. And um, another thing is, um, what else? Oh, yeah, I used to have really bad gut aches, too. 
And that's not really good when you're trying to go for a you know, 100 mile bike ride and you're just like sitting there doubled over and it's like, it's, and once I became vegan, all of a sudden my gut aches went away. And, um, and another thing that was great for a professional athlete is um, it's very, you have a very, you know, very limited time to be on, you know, peak form, top form. And with being a vegan, my coach can just bring me right up at the last minute, right before race season. Literally, just like that, I'm in race form because I can train every day, I recover quickly, I can do, you know, 11 days of hard workouts, one after another, double workouts per day, and I'm fine. You know, I'll get tired like everyone else, but it's just, it's incredible. And I'm looking at everyone else and I'm getting in peak form within, you know, three weeks, and other people are taking three months, and it's just the only difference between me and them. Is, um, is my diet, is that I'm vegan. Um, but I do have to warn you, there are, there are complications with being a vegan. One is that um, you know, when you travel, it's, it's tough because every time you order a salad, you have to say, um, please hold the eggs, the bacon bits, the cheese, you know, on my iceberg lettuce, and put the, you know, the oil and vinegar aside. Try asking for olive oil, and that's just like, they're like, no, you use that for cooking. I was told that once. but. Uh, you know, and even with the pasta, all the restaurants use eggs in their pasta, so, you, you know, you have to have rice with, you know, this, that, the other. But that's a little complicated. But um, probably more important than that is, um, like, when flu season comes around. In fact, this just happened to me last year. Um, everybody around me, when they catch the flu, they're just, like, knocked out cold, like, on the couch for weeks on end. Cannot function, all my meat-eating coworkers. No, their whole entire season will be just up and spoke. They will have wasted a whole entire year of preparation by, by getting the flu. But with me, I noticed that, um, and this is, this is kind of a drawback in a way, but, it's, but as long as you are aware of it, when, when I get hit with the flu, if I, if I do get hit, which is very rare, I'll just you know, kind of wake up one day and I'll go, oh, you know, I'm not quite feeling right. I'm a little, little tired, you know, a little lethargic, and I'll just go on. I'll go do my hard training rides and I'll go out there, you know, run, you know, run for an hour, go do my five hour bike ride afterwards. And then I'll get home and I won't be as perky and I'll wake up the next day and I'll be like, oh, I'm still kind of feeling tired. And I won't realize that I have what laid other people out for weeks. And if I would have just taken my one day off, maybe my obligatory two days off, I would have been fine and dandy, been able to train again. So that's probably the only thing that I've noticed about it is the traveling, you know, it kind of sucks to go to middle America and Europe, forget it. <laughs> that's, that's a little challenging too. Um, and then just the part about being aware because you will not crash and burn like your meat-eating friends. They'll, you know, they'll catch everything that comes through. It's almost as if they're a magnet for it. And you, on the other hand, will find that you just you're ready to go all the time, and when you do get sick, you just have to kind of remember, okay, you know, am, am I feeling off because I have a virus or because I have a cold? So um, let me see if there's anything else. <laughs> oh, and the how do I get enough protein? I always hear that. That's, you know, especially as a professional athlete and somebody who's been on the U.S. national team and, you know, raced with Stars and Stripes and raced World Cups and World Championships and I travel around the world racing, I hear a lot of the, oh, you can't do that, you know, you, how do you get your protein? And from my own personal experience, I can tell you that, um, you know, I, I'm clearly building muscle, you know, if, if you saw my apps, but seriously, I'm, you know, I'm clearly building muscle. I, you know, I can tell on myself, you know, am I building muscle, yes or no, yes I am. So what am I doing differently? Not really much. My diet consists of, you know, a lot of fruits and veggies. Um, and just like the normal foods, it's like if you go into a supermarket, people are like, oh, well, what do you eat? I go into a supermarket, and there's 10% animal products, 90% non-animal. I eat the 90%. That's what I eat. And for protein, it's like the government guideline just seems to be way too high. And I'm not, you know, I'm not a nutritionist. I, you know, I don't know a lot of the details, but I can tell you that from my own, my own point of view, I don't get nearly as much as the government guidelines tell me to get. You know, maybe one third if I'm lucky. I'm still building protein, you know, I'm still building muscle just fine. And, um, and I also think that um, 
that eating fruits and veggies is is just doing me fine. And I don't really get a lot of, you know, people like, oh, you do a lot of soy, tofu. No, not really, actually. I rarely do. But, um, but everything seems to be fine. And I think that I would probably have to be starving to death in order to not get enough protein. That's what I've noticed with, with my own, you know, with my own experience. And um, that's about it. Oh, wait. I want to, this is a plug for my mom. Uh, my mom recently became a vegan. She is 58 years old. Um, she's my mother. She's 58 years old. <laughs> I'm 36, by the way. <laughs> I, I guess that's about you're in the ballpark. Oh, okay. Anyway, my mom's about 58 years old. She has, you know, we grew up with pork chops every Friday, and you know, the meatloaf and the the stew, the um, the beef stew where you get those pieces of beef that you just kind of chew forever because they just never digest. And mm -hmm. now I found out, you know, that's like some sort of like vein or whatever it is. But anyway, that's my mom. And she <laughs> recently, within like a month and a half, yeah, bad cook. That's probably why I started becoming vegetarian <laughs> at, you know, the age of like 10. <laughs> but uh, anyway, she recently went vegan about a month and a half ago. And I told her to send me a vegan testimony of what her life has been like. And, um, and she said, I have to begin by saying that one month ago, I was an over-the-hill, overweight, oh, 59-year-old mother of four, living her own, on her own for the first time in her life, um, and not a happy one at all. I knew my daughter, Christine, was vegetarian almost all her life, but never thought much about it. Um, and then one day, she, I actually sent her the Guide to Vegetarian Living. You can get it. You can download it for free off the internet. And, um, and I sent it to her just, you know, thinking, wow, well, what the heck, you know, people do change. I really do believe that. And, uh, and it just, it turned her stomach and she said, you know what, this moment forward, I'm not being an accomplice to this, to this mass slaughter and torture of, torture of animals. And, um, and she said, I never expected such a remarkable change in my body. This is not something I commonly talk about, but I've been constipated my entire life. And I, I always remembered all the Metamucil and like all these different like little gimmicks, you know, like the, the drug to take care of this problem and then the drug to take care of those side effects of those problems. And, and that was my mom. And uh, she was also, she didn't write it in here, but she was also on like seven different medications for like swollen ankles and you name it, she was on it. And, um, and she said, uh, this is not something I commonly talk about, but I've been constipated my entire life. I remember at a young age of six to seven, having the pangs of constipation. The first week after not consuming meat or dairy products, I must have had seven to, ten, seven to 10 bowel movements. And I didn't have the usual strain and pain. I, I just thought that was just beautiful. And she said, <laughs> <laughs> after one month, I, I just, I've, I've, this is my life, so I've never known constipation. I've never ever had it, not one, not one day in my life, you know, because I've always, you know, been this, been more or less this way. After one month, I have more energy than I've ever had. Lost weight, began to feel more, began a more strenuous exercise program, and I feel like I'm not even middle aged yet. My whole body has undergone an overhaul, and, and it feels great. Whereas before, I was eating hamburgers and chicken. Now I eat rice and beans and a lot of fruits and veggies. Um, I wish I knew about this sooner, but I probably just wasn't listening. And now I never go anywhere without my water bottle. So in summarizing, I'd have to recommend the vegan way, and why not give it a shot? And keeping, oh, never mind. I'm not going to read that part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I'll read it. It's, it's kind of a spoof on, I'm also a writer. I write for the Marin Independent Journal. I have a cycling column where I always get in my vegetarian uh, comments about, you know, bringing the nutritional aspect of a vegetarian diet, saying, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's going to be counter counter and productive to any kind of exercising you'll do. And, and uh, in one of my articles I wrote on the internet at PezCyclingNews.com, I kind of had an underlying theme going throughout the whole, the whole entire article about what it was like, you know, to race for a Velo Bella at the biggest one-day road race um, in the U.S. And, and I kind of had like a, you know, and my teammate, you know, uh, Liz Bagash, single, likes long walks on beaches, you know, and I kind of put like a, a dating theme throughout it. And she wrote, so in summer, and then at the bottom I wrote, you know, and mine, you know, and Christine Peanut Verdaros likes, you know, vegan men and, you know, and all this other stuff. And anyway, 
And she wrote, so in summarizing, I'd have to recommend the vegan way and why not give it a shot. In keeping with the Vardaros tradition, I'm a kind vegetarian, five foot nine and a half tall, incurable romantic, long walks on beaches, <laughs> sunset, of course, romantic dinners, and of course, you'd have to be a vegan. So. Anyway, that's about it, and um, I'll be available for questions afterwards. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks, IDA, Bradley, and Thanks.